Rashford. Bit of a rush. I've just come from just come from doing Peep Show next door here at uh, Channel 4 TV Centre. <laughs> Luckily, I've got my Robert's Web costume on underneath. I, I put that on months ago. <laughs> Great. Just put my presenting spectacles on. Good. Right. Good evening. Well, this is Robert's Web, the show that reviews the best of the web, and I'm your host, Robert's Web, following in the footsteps of Jim All Savile and Beatles About. Rest in peace, Beatles. <laughs> For people my age, by which I mean my actual age as well as my showbiz age, the internet entered our lives when we were young adults. We view it mainly as the force that revitalized wanking just as we were about to give it up. <laughs> More on that later, but this week the internet became a sort of digital vigilante or digilante when it solved a crime. Ten year old Alex Wilson tweeted a picture of a man stealing an iPhone. Cute little kid uses technology to trap a criminal. In these dark times, it's hard to think of a more upbeat, feel good story but a smile on your face. Isn't that right, Arkley Barnett? If I was in charge and we can't send him to Australia anymore, I'd send him to Afghanistan to be used as cannon fodder alongside our brave troops. Sorry, do-gooders, but that bloke is a waste of life. Arkley, writing where else but on Daily Mail Online, <laughs> suggested the death penalty there for petty thievery. <laughs> on the same site, Khaled from London had a different perspective on the story and the image that illustrated it. Nice one, Emma Watson. Finally, Google's Street View went live in 20 German cities this week, so Germans can enjoy having their privacy violated by the stalking funksters as much as we do. For example, this unsuspecting man in the nudie. <laughs> what's... what's the problem, you know? Who hasn't lost something in the boot, got all hot while thinking about it, taken their clothes off, killed a dog and climbed in? That's what I call a ruddy good Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Celebrity Twitter news. Lots of political tweeting going on. A busy agenda for the leader of the Labour Party. Back to work at Parliament today. I'll be responding to the statement on NATO soon and then speaking at the PLP meeting tonight. That all sounds important, Ed, but what's David Miliband been up to? South Shields now has its first Morrisons. I opened it this morning. <laughs> And by opened it, he means went in at 7am to buy a two-litre bottle of diamond white. <laughs> Debbie McGee's been busy. I've been wrapping Christy presents all afternoon and I've lost Paul. Maybe I've wrapped him up too. Oh dear, I'm sure you haven't wrapped him up. Still, here's fun. Why don't you do what we do in my house and hold all the presents underwater for two minutes until they stop struggling? <laughs> Shane Ward's excited. I would love to perform at the royal wedding. How amazing. Shane seems to be under the impression that someone said to him, Shane, would you like to perform at the royal wedding? <laughs> Which is odd, because they definitely wouldn't have. <laughs> Here's everyone's favourite celebrity boobs organiser, Gokwan. Right, Tweeties. Gotta get some Z's. Massive, chinky, oversized snogs to the lot of you. <laughs> Can he call himself that word? <laughs> Can you be racist about yourself? Because if you can, Gok is. I just fell into a taxi. Have bruised my yellow ass. Great. <laughs> Does anyone know where the stop Gok is? <laughs> Professional unfunny man Keith Chegwin tweeted this. In response to those asking where I am, sorry, having trouble with people on here and threats. Back once it's sorted. <laughs> Do please keep those threats coming. <laughs> Harry Potter fans, i.e. children and very easily impressed adults, <laughs> were delighted this week when half of one of the stories was done as a film. In widespread press coverage, most editors chose to splash on a picture of Emma Watson. <clears throat> <laughs> Everyone's a bit overexcited about her, including Cal from London. I'm a bit worried about seeing this movie. I don't think I'll be able to stand up for a while, if you know what I mean, after watching Emma Watson for two and a half hours. If I was witch, I would marry her for sure. Cal, she's already rich, and I think you're confusing marrying with buying. <laughs> the new film has the fans buzzing with excitement, like this enthusiastic Uber fan. Wingardium Leviosa. 
Hello, I'm Harry Potter himself. Yes, I'm a very scary man. That's right. It's the real Harry Potter. You must recognize him from looking a little bit like Harry Potter. <laughs> to be fair, he does have quite a collection of merchandise. I filled three rooms of my house with Harry Potter collectibles. Every type of merchandise you could think of, I have it. Over 15 wands. Prop replicas. The English restaurants that I wore to prom. Yeah, he wore Harry Potter robes to his high school prom. <laughs> I suspect that his wand went unpolished that night. <laughs> Do you know, there's three minutes of this creepy little pube sprouter mooching around his creepy half-lit bedroom like a creepy little creep. Let's watch some more! In 2006, I went and saw J.K. Rowling in New York City, where she signed this, which is now one of four tattoos on my body. With plans for more. Is he going to put his other tattoos on his golden snitch? <laughs> Harry Potter fever is still raging in America. The brainy students of Harvard University have formed their own Quidditch team. It's exactly like it is in the books. <laughs> Except it's basically eight drippy girls playing netball with a broom between their legs. <laughs> Now, unless you've just got a TV aerial fitted to the underground cave you live in, you'll be aware that Prince William has got engaged to Kate Middleton. They're saying it'll be a wedding for the whole nation, in which case I suggest getting near to the front of the queue for the buffet. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone has their opinion on the royal family, and if you don't, well, don't worry, because Pete Broadbent, the Bishop of Wilsdon, which, for those of you who live outside London, um, well, you know when your bin is full, so you put a bit of rubbish sort of next to it on the floor, yeah? Well, imagine that having a bishop. <laughs> Earlier this week, the bishop said this on his Facebook page. Never underestimate the capacity of the media to descend into the most fawning deferential nonsense. I managed to avoid the last disaster in slow motion between big ears and the porcelain doll. I hope I can avoid this one too. And I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> this is what his Facebook page looked like. Pete's interests include a few Christian groups, Microsoft Outlook, and unusually, this sound will make you need to toilet. <laughs> I think that's a youth outreach program of some kind. <laughs> the Daily Mail forum had so much to say about the royal wedding, we felt compelled to go and make this. The glorious green of Britain's sumptuous countryside, where Daily Mail readers reside. We bring you 100% genuine comments from the keyboards of Middle England. So tell us, Daily Mail readers. What do you make of this marriage? Imagine an air hostess's daughter as Queen of England! Oh. Prince William is a disappointment for choosing that social climbing shark! She's no different to a council estate girl who gets pregnant so she doesn't have to work and gets a free house. <laughs> a big white wedding? She should wear any colour except white. It's doomed. She should watch out for white Fiat Puntos in tunnels. William is certainly watering down his mother's pedigree bloodline, the final nail in the coffin of royalty. God save the Queen. God save the royal family. God save the United Kingdom. I give you both my very best wishes. Hey, yeah, now she's got a ring on her finger, she'll stop swallowing. Hey? Eh? <laughs> The great thing about the internet is that you can make up any old bullshit and instantly spread it across the entire world. The latest victim is circus bully Jeremy Kyle. This week, someone decided to spread the rumour that he died. Some did genuinely find it hard to put their feelings into words. Jeremy Kyle better not be dead. I love him. Fortunately for Hannah, Jeremy Warra not be dead and he's still Gert Lush. But Jeremy isn't the only star to have been blighted by death rumours. Other stars affected include Jeff Goldblum, Kanye West and Dave Benson Phillips. 
you know, Dave Benson Phillips. <laughs> yes, incredibly, children's TV presenter Dave Benson Phillips was forced to tweet this. Can people stop spreading rumours of my death, please? It's untrue. It's very upsetting to my friends, family, employers and fans. Dave's not really dead. If he were, that would certainly appear among the FAQs on his hugely entertaining website. Which brings us neatly, if by neatly you mean effortfully, to this week's least frequently asked, frequently asked questions. <laughs> Let's take a look at what features on Dave Benson Phillips's cheerful FAQ page. Are you married to Dawn French? No, that's Lenny Henry. People get me confused with him quite a lot. Uh... Do you put that ready, steady cook? No, that's Ainsley Harriet. <laughs> Ooh, but it's not all bad news. Is it true Johnny Depp is a fan of yours? Yes, it's true. We are both fans of each other's work. Mutual admiration and respect. Johnny Depp's one of the finest actors of his generation, and Dave Benson Phillips likes him. <laughs> the internet gives free speech to all, as this next clip shows. This is Guy D. Francis. Hey! Fuckers! Guy lives in Norfolk with his wife and three children. Fuck, 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 fuck. And he has Tourette's syndrome. Ass cheeks. Yeah, ass cheeks. Now, don't worry, you Guardian readers and lovely people at Ofcom. We emailed Guy to check if it was OK to use those clips, and he sent us this message. Robert, fuck off. I would love you to uh, play my Tourette's karaoke videos, fuck off, you ass, on your show. Uh, keep watching for more, fuck off, and good luck with the series. Ass cheeks there, ass cheeks. <laughs> Guy has introduced his very own brand of karaoke to the world, and for anyone easily offended by swearing, I should point out that the clip you're about to see contains 25 asses, 22 fucks, and two you fuckers. And, most disturbing of all, some music by Lionel Richie. <laughs> This is how I see you. Bollocks! <laughs> now, where were we? Uh, Guy has picked up a whole army of fans with his website. Here's a couple of their admiring comments. You rock, dude! If I could have any syndrome, it would be too much. <laughs> and my own personal favourite. I like the part when he says that. <laughs> Me too. End of part one over. We'll be doing the other half of the internet in a minute. Go on, go on. Bag of pegs for a quid. <laughs> Fifty pegs in there for a pound. Come up short. Still got 20 seconds left. Mm. Push the bar, that should skip it on. Push the bar. Shit, not the bar mm. over. Oh, it's popped up again. Oh. <laughs> Thought I'd broken it. Web, the show that looks at the web and goes, <laughs> Thanks to the internet, we can now see how other countries interpret our own much-loved shows. On the Argentinian version of Strictly Come Dancing, we're about to see a model and actress, yeah, I think we all know what that means, Silvina Escudero, doing her dance. <laughs> See, there's a nice story being told there. Happy family viewing. Uh, she seems to be some sort of secretary. He's a clumsy janitor. They seem to be getting on, relaxing at the end of an evening. Well, 
nothing Bucks Fizz haven't done. <laughs> Moving from dancing to uh, something for the dads there. <laughs> Bloody hell! That is the rudest thing on television since the notorious rimming scene in Downton Abbey. <laughs> See how that compares to our own dear national treasure. <laughs> As you can see, Anne Widdicombe has gone for 92% more clothes than Sylvina and quite a bit less rear-ending. <laughs> Anne certainly wouldn't approve of the Argentinian dance. Then again, she also doesn't approve of sex before marriage, the ordination of women and equality for gay people before the law. So, comparing the two clips, you can only see one and that's Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> to the Argentinian Strictly, where the host has thrown a complete wobbly. <laughs> In Argentina, by the way, that wah, 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 wah sound signals a combination of anger and distress. <laughs> You know, having watched all that, I've become cross now. I'm so cross. I'm, I'm livid. I'm livid. <laughs> Where's my tiny hammer? <laughs> a dozen and one things you should know about the internet. Number 98. Oh, let's have a look then. Oh, my goodness, what an adorable little cutie. You fucking racist. Oh, no matter what you comment on, oh. Oh. someone will soon accuse you of being a racist. <laughs> In gay coffin news this week, funeral directors in Germany are launching coffins specifically designed for gay customers. <laughs> the coffins come with muscular, naked young men painted on them. After all, I'm sure everyone, gay or straight, loves to take the edge off a funeral with a little bit of a wank. <laughs> Here's what other people had to say about it. I'm not even gay and I'm buying one. <laughs> Hell, Vivian, I'm not even dead and I'm buying one. <laughs> WPE has this to say. Hey, I should bury my father in one of those. They hate gay men. <laughs> that was this week's gay coffin news. Just to warn you, next week's gay coffin news will be exactly the same. <laughs> now, no matter how much you delete your internet porn history, there will always be a history of internet porn. Here is that. Internet pornography. We've all seen it. And don't pretend you haven't. Mm -hmm. Busted, you grubby little rock monkey. <laughs> Porn is the only thing that makes any money on the internet, so it pops up all over the shop and dangles its bits in your face. It's 2010, but man has always tried to get his sticky mitts on dirty pictures. Back in the day, somewhere near Jurassic Park, Neanderthal man invented pictures. Mm -hmm. And moments later, made them smutty. <laughs> The first jazz mag was called the Karma Sutra and was published in 1250. But it was 900 pages long, difficult to hide from the girlfriend and impossible to use one-handed. In 1953, publisher Hugh Hefner commissioned a nature magazine specializing in beavers, pussies and great tits. Due to a mix-up, it was a runaway success, but it was kept out of reach of the average man on a very high shelf. <laughs> Luckily, in 1991, the internet fell into our laps. The first image on the internet was this. The second was this. At last, we were getting somewhere. However, the early internet was so slow, you could practically have a bath in between images. But with some extra wires and a bit of string, dial-up became broadband. Chops away. Suddenly, every computer was the nozzle of a grot pipe flinging prison-grade grumble straight into your face. 
But what of the future? Next year, we see the release of 3D internet pornography. Hurrah! Now you've been educated, the world is your pornographic oyster. Take this knowledge and use it wisely. And remember, I'm watching. Christmas is just a few weeks away, and at this time of year, we're all asking ourselves the same questions. What should I get, Mum? What should I get, Dad? How long could a dog survive in an airtight tub? <laughs> well, that, that's the question that Mike in my garden on dogtrader.com is asking, and it's not just idle curiosity. I'm going to get my daughter a Shih Tzu puppy for Christmas, and I want it to be like those big surprise birthday cakes where someone jumps out, but instead of a person, a puppy jumps out. I can't find a cardboard box big enough, but I have a large plastic tub that should do the trick. I'm just thinking of when I should wrap it, because the smallest amount of time I can leave it is for six hours, because I need to work on Christmas Day morning. Surprise! Look what I got you for Christmas. A dead Shih Tzu puppy. <laughs> Unfortunately for Mike, no one's answered his question yet. He should have gone straight to Yahoo Answers, the best place to get proper answers to stupid questions. Like, is there such a thing as gay hips? My girlfriend says I have gay hips, like the hips of a homosexual man. I'm straight, 90% sure. But I'm the of a man. Do gay hips exist? Now then, these gay hips. Uh, of course, homosexuality can be localised to a part of the body. For instance, I've got one gay ear, this one. It's always listening to penises. Whereas the other one is mad on boobs. Well, 90% of the time. <laughs> well, it's the end of the show. And what better way to sign off than with a good old-fashioned sing-song? Do join in at home as we sing Guy's unique Tourette's karaoke version of Elvis Presley's Always On My Mind. Maybe I didn't treat you. <laughs> what a good as I should have. <laughs> Maybe I didn't love you. <laughs> what a good as I should have. Good night.